African leaders have participated in at least six summits in the past year, fostering connections with counterparts across six different capitals, from Washington in the West to India in the East. This year has been marked by diplomatic efforts to strengthen relations, promote business and trade, enhance security, and shape future geopolitical engagements. Africa's influence grows at a time when food insecurity and conflicts over territories threaten global peace. Mohamed Yusuf reports. Africa seeks to become a focus of global power and draw the attention of influential nations seeking to build political and economic relations with the 54 countries on the continent. In the past 12 months, African leaders have visited European Union headquarters in Brussels, as well as India, Russia and the United States, Saudi Arabia, South Africa and Turkey. They have also met with the Chinese President Xi Jinping in South Africa to discuss China's Belt and Road Infrastructure Initiative, climate change financing, business and trade deals, global peace and security. Professor Chacha Nyaigoti Chacha, an expert in diplomacy and international relations, says Africa is an important player in global affairs and that countries would like to engage with the continent on several issues. They are making these meetings happen because they want to create uh, strategies on how they can continue assuring the African states that they are friends of the Africans and consequently expecting that African countries will be able to continue relating with them uh, amicably. And uh, of course, they expect a lot of economic gains and the political uh, goodwill. Some experts, however, have described some of the summits African leaders attended as gatherings that lack substance and perpetuate power imbalances in international political systems. With conflicts like Russia's war in Ukraine and the Israel-Hamas war, political experts say international gatherings provide a means for some countries to seek Africa's support. Paul Melly is a consulting fellow with the Africa program at Britain's Chatham House, a research organization. He says Africa can be an influential voice in venues like the United Nations, where countries vote on political and security issues. There's a very simple numerical fact. Africa, depending on how you count them, you're looking at, what, around 50 votes at the UN. That's quite, quite a lot of arguing power. So... I mean, obviously, there are other continents that also have quite a few countries in them. But what, I think one of the things that stands out about Africa is that it's a continent where there is, in very loose terms, there is a bit of a culture of collective action. That's quite a lot of votes and quite a lot of political leverage. Mele says Africa wants to be hard. But I think the tone of engagement really matters. And you can have as many summits as you like and you can mobilize as much resources as you like. But if you, if you don't get the tone right, if, if the tone is not seen as sufficiently respectful or understand, willing to sit and listen to what African leaders have to say, you can sometimes um, find that it doesn't work. Experts say they expect more countries to engage with Africa in coming years. Chacha, however, says the countries on the continent will need to engage more among themselves. So they will remember 2023 as a, a year when they made so many uh, interactions with the other international countries and the foreign countries. And they will now remember that uh, what they have to learn to do very fast is to network within themselves in order for the other years which are coming they should have one voice. Some countries like France have expanded their approach in dealing with Africa, not only inviting its leaders but also its youth, women, activists and business people to foster good relations. Tensions, however, remain between France and some of its former colonies in Africa. They include Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger, which have kicked out French forces. Coups have also occurred in the three African nations, which recently formed a defence alliance with the aim of fighting jihadists. Mohamed Yusuf, VOA News, Nairobi. Russia has reopened its embassy in Burkina Faso after nearly 32 years. 
The French news agency AFP says Russia's ambassador to Ivory Coast, Alexei Soltikov, would head the mission in Burkina Faso until the new ambassador is named. Soltikov described Burkina Faso as an old partner with whom Russia has had solid and friendly ties. Since coming to power in September 2022, Burkina Faso's ruling junta has distanced itself from France, its historic partner, and moved closer to Russia. Moscow has pledged to deliver free grain to the African country, which is one of the world's poorest. In October, Burkina Faso signed a deal with Russia for the construction of a nuclear power plant to increase the energy supply to the country where less than a quarter of the population has access to electricity. The UN mission in Mali, MINUSMA, officially handed over to the national authorities one of its last camps in a large city in the north of the country, Timbuktu, before the end of its final withdrawal, ORTM Public Television indicated. The MINUSMA sites of Gao and Timbuktu were the last camps not to have been handed over because it was planned there. After January 1st, for what the UN calls the liquidation of the mission, that is say, for example, handing over the last pieces of equipment to the authorities or terminating existing contracts. But the security situation in this region, play to jihadist attacks, has precipitated the definite the definitive departure of MINUSMA to Timbuktu, failing to have found a solution for the internal security of the MINUSMA base in Timbuktu. This base had to be closed urgently. Arrangements have been made to do this, a UN source told AFP under cover of anonymity. In the name of the highest authorities of the transition, in the name of the population of the Timbuktu region and my name, I would like to say thank you to MINUSMA for the efforts made within the framework of the return of peace, of living together and social cohesion, declared the governor of the region, Bokon Kante, during the official handover ceremony the images of which were broadcast on Thursday on the ORTM television news. The Kanos, who took power by force in 2020 in Bamako, demanded in June, after months of deterioration in relations, the immediate departure of MINUSMA deployed since 2013 in this country in the grip of a deep, multidimensional crisis. The UN Security Council ended the missionary's mandate on June 30th and gave it until December 31st to leave the country. Since then, MINUSMA, whose numbers have hovered around 15,000 soldiers and police officers, more than 180 members of whom have been killed in hostile acts, has staggered the handovers in the sometimes difficult conditions in the north and the pressure from a military escalation between all the armed actors present on the ground.